Mark, uh, you have started a company by the name of Elephant Scale in the, in the education field. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you end up starting this company a, a number of years ago? I live in Houston and Houston is in Texas and everybody saw the Western so they know people ride horses and they shoot their guns. But there is no big data here. Even now, it's the third largest city. It now beats Chicago. But still, there is no really big data. It's essentially a cow town and an oil town. And when I started my big data enterprise, there was no work in Houston. So I started an, an, a meetup, and I already started teaching at my meetup. And then Intel, who was rolling out their own Hadoop at this time, they found me, and they said, do you want to teach? And I said, sure, yeah, of course, I'm already teaching at my meetup, and that's how it all started. Big data started a number of years ago, and now it's evolving into more uh, machine learning. Where do you think the interest comes from? What is the, the one thing that motivates the most people to get into this field? You see, we started teaching big data about six, seven years ago. So it was interesting, it was okay, but it wasn't as hot as it becoming now. And what exactly is becoming hot now? This is AI. So I see it everywhere. I was in China, I'll tell you a story. So they need an AI part, just because they both told them. And they need it on a Chinese server, they need it with the Chinese provider, and they needed flashes so that people would know that they're using AI. So that is happening in, in every large company. Another side of the thing is that Google tells them, if you look at what Google is doing, Google is wasting millions and billions of dollars, not wasting, but giving them away for education. They want the whole humanity to be able to do AI. Do you think um, there is also a renewed interest in, in, in companies to uplift their, their workforce skills? And um, if that is the case, why? It used to be that you need a few more people in the area, let us say, data science, machine learning. Well, let us hire some consultants. That was the popular approach. And another popular approach was this, oh, but those consultants are expensive. So let's hire them in India or Philippines outsource. What happened now is completely the opposite. Technologies are becoming more powerful. With one line of code, you can write much more. I'll give you an example. All of Hadoop code base is about, I think, 120,000 lines of code. The replacement, you can call it the replacement of Hadoop, uh, does four times more in four times less. less. The Spark code base is 50,000 lines. Everybody says, educate your own team. Don't fire those people, educate them. This is Andrew Ng's point of view. He, he creates a whole movement about educating the people in place. That's what Coursera is all about. If your idea is not to augmenting human intelligence, then, then what it is your vision for the future of the interaction between human and machine? Instead of making me work less, computers make me work more. Because I get the emails and I need to respond to the emails just to start this. But eventually I feel that if you give a very smart program that will be able to do some kind of AI to a human, then that human will have to decide, well, on a higher level, what should I do with my life? What products should I design? Uh, you know, what uh, higher level thinking should I do? And that's where I see things are going. People are becoming in this area, not everybody. Uh, people are becoming uh, higher level thinkers given this additional hardware. Of course, whatever I say has exceptions. It's not a universal point of view. People do outsourcing. They don't always educate their teams. But here's one interesting example I heard just yesterday from Andrew Ain. Andrew Ain was saying that he used hair salon, a place where you get the haircut, as one example that's not completely automated. So here's one area where computers will never reach. And meanwhile, his friend, says, Andrew, you know, I can make my robot do any kind of hairstyle, but some, uh, some I still cannot do. Yours, however, is very easy. So he was disproved right then and there. You have computers who can do hair.